Hey, what up you guys? It is Sassy Assassin here back with another video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are having a wonderful week so far. It is currently August 13th, 2024. And in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to a Amberlynn Re-related video brought to us by none other than Amberlynn's now ex-bestie, Alexis. The video is titled Amberlynn's Former Besties Third Q&A, Tommy is Out of Control. So I'm going to keep this at normal speed, but I will speed it up if I feel the need to do so. So without further ado, folks, let's get to. Hey guys, it's Alexis, and this video is going to be my third Q&A. I also want to talk about a conversation that I had with Amber Lynn in January. And I also will be releasing two conversations that Tommy had with two separate random Instagram users. <gasps> Tommy, when are you going to learn? You cannot spill your guts out to these random people, especially if you ever had any intention of getting back together with Amber Lynn. But maybe after this video, you'll start to think before you speak or type. And you've probably also figured out by now that you could do anything and Amberlynn's still not going to leave you. So live your best life, I guess. This first question is, does Amberlynn yearn to be besties with Jordy? She said it herself that he reminds her of a special someone. Now, I just want to say I see the frog and I love Karina. And I also love Jordy. They have always been and always will be my favorite reaction channels. And if you were paying attention in my last two videos, I kind of subtly alluded to that. Um, but anyways, yes, I do. That's why in the live stream that she deleted, I had mentioned something about like, oh, I thought you liked Jordy," Because I really genuinely thought she did. But I guess we're playing pretend over here and she doesn't. So <laughs> I also want to add a fun little story time moment to this. Isn't it weird, though, that Amberlynn yearns to be besties with Karina and Jordy, who both do not like her? Who both have said disparaging things about her? Like, that's weird. I'm, I'm sorry, that's weird. Why would you be want to be fr friends with a reaction channel that speaks against you? So when Amber Lynn was living in Kentucky, she saw um, a license plate that belonged to the same state that Jordy lives in. And she freaked out and was like, oh, my God, he's stalking me. He sent someone to stalk me. And I was just like, girl, I think you're a little paranoid, but I also didn't really know. So I was just like, it's OK, like trying to comfort her. But now that I think back on it. <laughs> That is ridiculous. Or is it? <laughs> so I doubt that Farina or Jordy or any reaction channel in the community would literally send some Amberlin. That that's crazy. Anyone who does stalk Amberlin, and let's face it, there are people who have um do it on their own accord. So this question asks, did Amber say anything to you about Beck's new partner? So Amber Lynn said she didn't know anything about Beck's new partner when I mentioned it to her, but then she asked to see the post and I had made a comment like, oh, Becky looks so good. And their partner is like <laughs> really hot. And needless to say, she did not appreciate that comment, but she didn't speak on either of them in that very moment. The most that Amberlynn has ever said to me is basically that Becky is money hungry and is capitalizing off of their relationship through live streams. But honestly, Destiny did that too. And with what they both had to deal with, especially Becky, um, pop off, make your coin. The only person who hasn't spoken. I don't disagree with that. Like, seriously. Both Destiny and Amber and even Casey have all been through hell with Amber. I think they deserve to make a, a, some coin considering Amber Lynn made a bunch of coin off them. 
for how many years? And the fact that Amber Lynn is clearly jealous of Becky's new partner and the fact that Becky has moved on with somebody else is hilarious to me. Because it just shows that even though her and Becky are no longer together and haven't been together for a number of years now, she still thinks that she has some sort of claim over her. Same with Destiny. Does Amberlynn actually think that, you know, if any of her other partners or, or, or girls that she is talking to doesn't work out, that she's just going to go back to them and they're just going to take her back? Like, no. No. That's not going to happen. Why would they want to get back with you, Amber, when they clearly do not like you? Look out about Amberlynn yet is jade but jade if you're listening i have the platform for you to speak out on i would love to hear from you so with that oh i think we would all love to hear from jade i would love to hear jade's perspective but i doubt jade is jade's just done and she just wants to be left alone and quite frankly i don't blame her she must have gone through hell while being with Amber. That being said, the next question is, is there any proof slash validity to the DV allegations against Jade? I find it hard to believe because of Amber's history with lying on previous partners and also admitting to being the violent one at one point. So when Amber Lynn and Jade broke up, they were obviously still living together. And after we had established that her and I are just going to be friends and she had already moved on to Danielle, um, her and Jade and I would sit on three-way phone conversations pretty often. Sometimes the conversations lasting like five, six, seven hours. And I Jesus, five to, s to seven hours? Seven hours been kidding me i i couldn't do that no way amber must think that they they don't have lives that they don't have a, a job to get to my god like seriously that is that is a long time to be on the phone with somebody Honestly, Jade never gave me any red flags. She always just came off as like cool, level-headed, patient, hardworking, kind, intelligent. And I don't even know why she wanted to date Amberlynn in the first place. And Amberlynn did tell me that she has hit Jade before and used to go through her phone periodically, like while Jade was in the shower. But she did mention one time that they were fighting and Amberlynn slapped her and I guess Jade like pushed her and she fell to the ground. And I think it was a bigger deal than it actually was because Amberlynn obviously couldn't get back up by herself. And she said Jade didn't come to help her right away, but <laughs> I don't know if I would have either if I was in Jade's position. I mean, I'm sure Jade could have fought her back. So if the worst she's ever done is pushed her and Amberlynn fell over, I wouldn't say that this is like a valid DV allegation. Also, during one of these three-way conversations, Jade had made a comment like, oh, Alexis, like, you're really cute. You remind me of one of my exes. And then I guess after the conversation ended, um, Jade asked Amberlynn for my number, but obviously Amberlynn was not going for that which is valid but um so we don't have each other's numbers or anything and i haven't spoke to jade since she dropped amber lynn off in oklahoma also right before jade was i just want to say this with regards to the dv like jade you know using amber lynn i think it's amber lynn that was the culprit but then again, 
Alexis has also said, you know, it takes two to tango. So they both were in each other, you know, let's say um, abusing each other. But I think also that Amberlynn pushed Jade to a point where she lashed out because let's face it, Amberlynn has a history of being abusive with her partners. And I'm not going to lie, Amberlynn falling over, you know, and not being able to get back up, I wouldn't have helped her either. I wouldn't have helped her either. Like, why, why should, why should anyone? You're sitting there getting yelled at, getting slapped and, you know, you know, basically physically and, and verbally abused, why would you want to help that person? was supposed to take Amberlynn to Oklahoma. They were fighting pretty bad. So Jade was like, I'm not taking you. I don't care. Ask Alexis. So Amberlynn actually did ask me to take her to Oklahoma. Wait, I want to hear that again. I'm sorry. I got to go back you i don't care ask alexa also right before jade was supposed to take amberlynn to oklahoma they were fighting pretty bad so jade was like i'm not taking you i don't care ask alexis so amberlynn actually did okay so this is i'm a foe okay you want to take me to oklahoma i have no way oh shit when i have to leave on the yeah i'll take off off I'll take off of work. You're going to take care of the rental car? I just don't know what I'm going to do about Bas Basil, but I'll figure it out. Where's Jade? It's a long story. Her and I are absolutely done. Can you call me? I'll call in like an hour. Is that okay? Okay. Did ask me to take her to Oklahoma, and I was going to get a rental car and take off of work and drive her from Kentucky to Oklahoma. But at the last second, Jade changed her mind and she was like, whatever, I made a commitment. I'll go through with it. I wanted to hear LOL. And then, oh wow, so she was actually gonna get a rental car. Him. And I think she felt bad about me taking off of work and having to put my life on hold for an obligation that was hers and not mine. So this next question asks So you're what she's what she's saying is that Amberlyn was actually willing to pay for the the rental car. Okay. I mean, at least she was Can you give us a more in-depth timeline of all of Amber's flings, like who came first and how long were they talking? So Danielle came immediately after her and I decided that we were going to just be friends. And Amber really, really liked Danielle, but Danielle had already been in a relationship for like 10 years, I guess, already. So she gave Amber the same excuse that Erica did, which was, I'm only in this for financial reasons. But both Danielle and Erica claimed that their partner slash wife didn't work so i'm not really sure what that was about but amberlyn believes anything you tell her if she likes you enough and if you're just outright cheating you kind of have to have some kind of story as to why you're cheating or why the cheating is like validated so i don't necessarily know if damn amberlyn is really that girl doesn't matter as long as you're giving her the right kind of attention amberlyn will accept anything She's literally that desperate for a partner because she can't be alone. How pathetic. Like, seriously, have some self-respect, Amber. My God. But you know what? I don't feel sorry for Amberlyn. Not one bit. You know why? Because she's keeping girls, you know, on the line. So in case one doesn't work out and then she'll have somebody else you know, to talk to and to get with. Can you imagine? 
So that being said, though, she's probably still talking to other girls on the side while still being with Tommy. Damn. This is the truth, but this is just what I know to be true. As far as Abby goes, um, she was just this random 20 year old that messaged her on, I don't know, Instagram, TikTok, some kind of platform. And Amberlynn knew she was 20 when she started talking to her. And when she told me, I was like, what is wrong with you? A 20 year old has nowhere near the same mindset that you do. Ew, that's so disgusting. That is so disgusting. She's pretty much a ch practically a child, basically. Yeah, she is. In but still. You're still. Like a teenager in so many ways, you still have the high school, like teenage mentality. I know I did when I was in my 20s. I didn't like. You know, become 18, you know, uh, legally an adult and. All of a sudden, I'm just, you know, mature and everything. Like, I still had my high school mentality for a number of years after graduating. And I think that's a, that's like that for a lot of pe people. And as for Danielle, I just want to say this. I think Danielle was also a troll. The same kind of story that Erica had. Troll. So she was not only being trolled by Erica, she was also being trolled by Danielle. I find that hilarious. And Amber Lynn was still willing to be with that person. Even though it's like literally the same scenario. Like, part of her brain isn't even fully developed yet. And then when exactly. I expressed that I thought that was gross, she backtracked and lied and said that she was 25. And then she lied again and said that Abby had lied to her and said that she was 25, but she's actually 20. Either way, Amber knew her real age. Well, this isn't a surprise because let's face it. Amberlynn has in the past gone after indi female individuals who have been underage or who had just become of age and there's like a considerable age gap between Amberlynn and said female. It has been heavily documented on her channel. So this isn't slander. This is just fact. And it's sick. There are compilation videos out there that have documented this aspect of the Amberverse. And I don't think it gets talked about enough, in my humble opinion. So the age gap between them would be like me dating a 15 year old right now. Granted, Abby. That makes me feel really queasy. Imagine. Like I'm almost in my. The thought of even dating somebody. In. Let's say the early 20s. I, I couldn't do it. You know. I just couldn't do it. It is technically of age, but ew. And I guess the reason why it didn't work out is because Abby is very religious. So she would always tell Amberlynn, like, this relationship is wrong. I can't be gay. God hates me. And growing up in a religious household myself and having to fight so incredibly hard to be gay, and being told I was wrong my entire life up until a couple years ago. I definitely understand the brainwashing and like where she came from. But like, why are you flirting with Amberlynn if you're ashamed to be gay? I don't really know. Abby was just a mess and way too young and like she needs to be focused on something else. And she also was like an attractive, pretty girl. 
So, again, not understanding the appeal of, for Amber Lynn here, but whatever. Now, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not hating on this Abby person. It's obvious that she has, a, she's, in my, see, in my point of view, she's almost like a child. You know what I mean? Even though she's of age, to me, she's still a child in a lot of ways. And given the fact that she's still dealing with her own sexuality, and then you gotta, you, you throw in like religion, that's a lot to deal with. And you don't want to get involved with somebody like Amberlynn Reed, who has no like idea how to deal with something like that, who doesn't even care about other people's beliefs doesn't care about other people in general just herself like that's like a whole that would be, would have been a whole ass mess you know what i mean like i'm so glad that it didn't work out between amberlyn and abby and abby i hope you do get get things figured out and understand that it's okay to be gay. Like, in my humble opinion, I think God will s still accept you, even if you're gay. Not every person who is, like, religious would believe that, but those are my personal beliefs. Because one isn't gay by choice one is gay because that's just how they were born and we are all made in the in the eyes of god so basically you were born gay for a reason now as far as the timeline goes with both of those relationships they were definitely overlapping but Amberlynn would have chosen Danielle over Abby in a heartbeat. And before Amberlynn and I stopped talking, they were still popping in periodically here and there. And she has spoke with both Danielle and Abby while being in a relationship with Tommy. And speaking of Tommy, this is one of the conversations that I received because once again, Amberlynn has chicks waiting in line in case one relationship doesn't work out. It's really sick, and in my opinion, Amberlynn is a danger to other people for doing this. Yeah, she's going after really young and impressionable girls who, yes, who are of age, but still, they're very impressionable. And that's how she likes them because it's they're easier to manipulate when they're young and they're un inexperienced. From a okay, let's just read this before she. Okay, so this says, Are you and Amber really over? Unfortunately, yes. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, Jen. I thought you were her happy ending. The world sucks. I genuinely liked being around her and spending time with her. We like a lot of the same things, but the trolls went too far. Well, I don't know what to even say. Sad face. Can't you keep in contact, but anyway, from the public, but away from the public eye? Well, I found out too that she was talking to Erica while we were together, like the whole time. Fuck, I wasn't expecting you to say that. Imagine. Amberlynn's like, oh, you know, I really want to be with Tommy. Like, she's my soft love, but you're still talking to Erica and sending her weird cookie prawn while this is going on. I don't like Tommy. I think she's very problematic, but girl, run. Don't walk. Run. I'm sure there are other fatties out there that are better than amber lynn let's just say that random tiktok user that commented on one of my videos saying that okay 
Okay, I have to ask you something, though. Please don't take it the wrong way, sure. Are you into feederism? Literally no judgment here. Understood. Is Erica is Erica's wife staying with her? How did you... F How did you find out? What? You're lying, Tommy. You are into feederism. You're on feeder websites. The lies, even from Tommy. They wanted to show me something. And I'm not going to lie. After I read this screen record, I, I don't care. I have no clue if they are. And frankly, I don't care. I just want to grieve in peace. Grieve the relationship. Grieve my Colleen. If you don't mind me asking, how were you open to dating Amber while still grieving? I guess I went too far. LOL, sorry. It was a little too personal. I realize now I wasn't ready. I'm just lonely. Nothing can replace her. So in Amber's live last night, she said y'all are still together. Oop, there's the truth, I guess. I felt really bad for Amber, and some of this conversation even took place after they were already back together. Like, that's- Okay, hold on. Sorry, I'm- uh, We were back together, yes. When are you heading back to see, see Amber? Uh, you just want to grieve in peace for Colleen. Uh, it's obvious that she really did maybe care about this person. But- you're hopping into a relationship with Amber? You know, I feel like I'm getting deja vu. Because this is the same, somewhat the same narrative as it was with Becky. Becky, before being with Amber, had been in a relationship with somebody else. And she wasn't ready to be in another relationship. And then bing, bang, boom. She's with Amber. So it's impossible. Now, I understand people have their opinions about Tommy, but is it possible, though, that Amber Lynn is the one that's manipulating Tommy and not the other way around? Or are they both manipulating e each other? Because it seems to me, based on the conversation, that Tommy is, I don't know, she's lonely, seeking comfort from somebody. Amber swoops in, thinks, you know, Tommy is cute, and takes advantage of Tommy's loneliness. I think, and this is my humble opinion, that Tommy's actually the one being manipulated. I'm not on Tommy's side by any means. I think she is just as sick and disgusting as Amber Lynn is for her participation in in Colleen's demise. May she rest in peace. But it's see, I I think Colleen. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I think Tommy is the one that's being manipulated by Amber into relationship. That's what it looks like to me. But I could be wrong. Because when you're grieving, you know, some whatever, you're not in the right headspace. You know? You're vulnerable. And somebody like Amber, who is very manipulative, who is a predator, will use that to their advantage. Conversation even took place after they were already back together. Like that's, oh, it's hectic. And here is the second conversation that happened with another random Instagram user. She needs to stop posting and let it die. I'm sure she's making a nice amount of money off me losing everything. Welcome to the Amberverse. That's why no one went downhill when she shit on Beck. Beck did everything for her and Amber treated her like garbage. ALR is in it for ALR. Like, I really want to know what Tommy was thinking when she was responding to all of these random people and 
making these allegations that she didn't really know who Amberlynn truly was because I was I wish she wish she would have told me. She told me absolutely she absolutely didn't want me to watch any reaction channels or anything like that. I, LOL, I wonder why. Well, I clearly know why, LOL. She made it sound like they just pick on her for views, like silly petty stuff. I didn't know there was actual v validity behind the videos. See oh shit. So see, here's a so, so the the vibe that I'm getting is that I don't think Tommy has really been in the Amberverse that long. And Amberlynn's selling her a bill of goods. She's manipulating her. Okay? Taking, you know, um, advantage of Tommy's vulnerability. Just so she can be, Amber can be in a relationship with, with Tommy. And then to top it off, Tommy has a child. And Amber sees that as an opportunity to be a step, you know, to be a mother. Since, you know, she ha doesn't have the ability to have children of her own. Thank God. But, my God, this is not a very good situation. And like I said, I understand there are people that have their issues with Tommy. I have my issues with Tommy. I think she's into feederism. I think she helped aid in Colleen's unfortunate demise, but yeah, I think there's manipula have like a lot of manipulation on Amberlynn's end. I was on FaceTime when Tommy was in Oklahoma City, and in front of me, Amberlynn asked Tommy if Tommy knew more about who Amber was than she let off in the beginning. And Amber Lynn had asked to see Tommy's YouTube history. And initially, Tommy lied and said that she didn't know and she didn't watch reaction channels. And then when Amber Lynn was persistent that she wanted to see her YouTube history, Tommy literally turned off her phone, like right in front of me, picked it up and turned it off. Amber was eventually able to get the phone turned back on and she looked through Tommy's YouTube history right in front of me. Needless to say, Tommy was a very active reaction channel watcher, but the fact that she like lied in her face and then turned her phone off was like appalling to me. Absolutely appalling. Well, I mean, yeah, it is appalling. You're lying. You're lying watch reaction channels and turn your phone off. It's an obvious sign that, yeah, you watch reaction channels. But is it really, like, Amberlynn's business what she watches? So who cares if she watches reaction channels? Why does that even matter? I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I, I must be missing something here because I don't get it why it actually really matters in the first place. I mean, you start dating Amberlynn. She tells you she's a YouTuber. You're obviously going to look her up, and then obviously you're going to see reaction channels, and obviously you're going to, you know, you're going to be curious and watch the reaction channels to find out who exactly you're with. I mean, it's like, it's only natural for to watch a reaction channel if you you know what I mean? Like hell, if I was in Tommy's place, I, that I would watch a reaction channel. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm like I said, maybe I'm missing something here. So right here, Tommy is basically outing herself. She does, and she was good at making me feel good about myself. I guess that is what is considered love bombing and i see it now I'm serious because i'm still so hurt by losing colleen but it felt good to have someone actually care about me again you know so I, i'm right i'm right about this amber lynn is the one that's actually the manipulator in the situation and tommy is you know still very broken up about colleen and 
is in a very vulnerable position. And she's making st very stupid decisions by talking to just anyone on the internet. Okay. And letting herself be caught in Amberlynn's web. It's like, dude, you watch reaction channels. Okay, like, we're all telling you Amberlynn is not a good person. Amberlynn's someone that you need to stay away from. And it's like, for fuck's sake, heed our advice. Especially for those of us who've been watching Amberlynn for years, maybe longer than you've even known about Amber. Like, take our advice. Stay away from Amber. By saying that she just wants someone to care about her and states that Amberlynn love bombed her, which is absolutely true. But Tommy, you also love bombed Amber. True. True. There's manipulation on both sides, but I think it's more Amberlynn than it is Tommy. Because she didn't want, she wasn't taking this relationship very seriously because she's still pretty, you know, broken up about Colleen. So I think, you know, considering the pattern of behavior that we've seen from Amberlynn with when it comes to relationships and the fact that she's so desperate for somebody. I think Colleen is being more manipulated by Amber Lynn than Amber Lynn is being manipulated by, by Tommy. But I, they're, they're both pieces of shit. And quite frankly, in a lot of ways, they fucking deserve each other. Based on what we know about Tommy. As well. And are still continuing to do so. So if Amber Lynn was so bad, why did you get back together with her? I guess I'm just not really understanding. And quite frankly, I don't think I ever will. Also, this. I will explain it again, okay? I don't know if Alexis will ever watch this video. But when you're vulnerable, like how Tommy is at the moment, you're grieving. you're not going to be thinking straight you you know you and that's when it's so easy for somebody like Amberlynn to swoop in and like literally manipulate the fuck out of you if cuz i think if if Tommy was in her right mind you know if she you know if she wasn't grieving if, if she wasn't you know in such a vulnerable spot i don't think Tommy would have gotten with somebody like Amberlynn I don't know. I don't know. Then she then again, maybe she would have, but not so soon. I don't know. I I just think it's a a two-sided coin here. I think they're just both manipulating each other. I think, but I like I said I just think Amberlyn's you know, the more more of a manipulator than Tommy is. And this is your joke pretending to be nice and then and then share my conversation with Alexis. Question mark, does that make you feel proud or cool or what? You're not a good person, babe. And what are you? This is Tommy's response to stalking my TikTok and finding out about the girl who sent me the first screen recording. Like, did you really not think this was going to come out? That's crazy. And speaking of crazy. Tommy, you're way too trusting. Um, What is this? Okay. This is Amberlynn. My mom thinks I have a crush on you. LMAO. Why? L I'm not sure. She didn't say why. Nope. I ain't asking. LOL. Do you? LOL. Do I have to be honest? LOL. Yes, girl. Uh, LOL. Yes, I do. Okay, what is this? In January, after my ex girlfriend and I had ended things officially, and Amber and Danielle weren't really headed in a great direction. Amberlynn made up this scenario, well, what I perceive to be made up, about how her mom asked her if she had a crush on me, to which she confirmed that she did. Shocker. And when I asked her why, this was her response. But if you liked me so much, why did you get into a relationship with Erica two weeks later?
Why do I have a crush on you? I've gotten to know you the way your heart is because I see the love you have to give and see, and I see how you want to be loved. Growing as friends and our hours of phone calls, I have grown to like you more than a friend. Being there for you when you or when you're sad, laughing with you, and having those silent but peaceful times on the phone with you have made me see you differently than I have before. You have the cutest smile I've ever seen. You giggle, your giggle gives me butterflies. You're a lovely person who genuinely makes me laugh. Genuinely makes me, makes me laugh. And I just want the best for you, always. I want you to be happy. I know we will never, we will never be together, and that's okay. I love being your best friend, and that's what matters to me. You're special, so yeah, my crush has formed recently. And I wasn't going to tell you, but since you asked, I can't lie. And then Alexis responds. I'll respond to this in a second. That message is very manipulative. And this seems like a like a very... I, I feel like she said this shit before to somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, a master manipulator at work here. Honestly, I was kind of, like, getting really irritated with her at this time. Because she wasn't being a very good or active friend. So looking back, I feel like this was a manipulation tactic in order to not only keep me close to her, but keep me on the back burner in case, like, it didn't work out with any of the other girls that she was talking to at the time. Exactly, because that's exactly what it is. Amberlynn will give you, you know, the nice words and, oh, I love you, and you know, this and that, all the cutesy pooshies. Purchase an extra. And this is why I say Amberlynn doesn't know what love is. Because this is, what she's doing is not love. She likes the idea of love. She loves the idea of love. But she doesn't know what love is. She hasn't experienced real love. And if Amberlynn took the time to actually find somebody who she has a genuine connection with, I think, you know, she would have, and learn actually to love somebody i think things would be different but i don't think amberlyn is capable of doing that with her and her narcissism and her manipulative behavior i just don't think she's capable of finding real love because she has this idea of what lo she thinks love should be and it's this you know romance novel fantasy crap you know time but then after saying all of that she claims that we could never be together i'll respond to this in a second alexa says why couldn't we why could we never be together that was really sweet two lines sweet though sorry i'm still with my mom we are watching a scary movie lol answer the question because i think you deserve better than me and i don't know it's hard to explain. And then proceeds to give me this bull excuse of her believing that I deserve better than her, which is true, and that she just simply can't explain it. Girl, you and I both know very well that you were probably talking to Erica already, but if things didn't work out, I'd always be here. So you were just kind of prompting me to start to see you romantically. And then she claimed she was so hurt by Danielle and Jade. And I was apparently so hurt from my last girlfriend. But I disagree. Why? Because I don't think you're any less than what I deserve. But I want to find someone who makes... I want you to find someone that you have a, chem have a chemistry and spark with. Why wouldn't we have that? I'm not saying we wouldn't. Maybe we, we can someday. Someday, I'm still hung up. Uh, so Jade and Danielle being hurt by them, and the same with you when it comes to Bailey. I want us to be in a better spot so we have a good chance of working. That's valid. This is just manipulation on Amber's part. But I was only with for two months. That she wanted us to be in a better spot before we tried something like that, and then just basically was like, "Okay, friends, until then." Sounds good. Best season. 
but I do like you. I didn't want to tell you, lol. Duh. We're never going to stop being bestie. About anything. Like, about what you said? Sure. I mean, I definitely could see myself liking you back. I obviously want to see if the chemistry would be there or not. And I wouldn't really have to assess if you would be a good and healthy relationship for me or not. I would have to assess whether the chemistry would be a healthy relationship or not. I got lost. I'm sorry. I can't afford to get into something that I'll... That'll break my heart months or years down the line. Again, I would have to really see that you really like me for real. Okay, cool. Meanwhile, I'm like, what the f*** is happening? And I definitely didn't see it as me being on the back burner at the time. But since I have stepped away from this relationship with her, and I've been able to assess my own feelings about everything, I definitely 100% see it that way now. But then she would periodically send me stuff like this. Gross. That is so gross and cringy. Oh my god. Complete narcissist only a, a complete and utter fucking narcissist would send shit like that like oh my god amber how can you not be embarrassed by this shit I, i'll never know oh man i'll never i don't ever want to see that again alexis please do not post anything like that again because that that's just oof oof it's, oof Amber, Miss Missy, baby. Ugh. Lynn, are you okay? What? <laughs> what do you mean? All I have to say is, <laughs> row. What is happening? The energy is different. <laughs> the energy is a little different. Bitch, you're making the energy different. Shut the fuck up. So, like, what was I supposed to think? And yeah, exactly. You get sent something like that, okay, by someone who said, I have feelings for you, but it's never going to work, whatever, but I'm going to fuck, like, TikTok with my only my bra on. Like, oh, my God. This is... We're, we're like, literally getting an inside look on how Amber Lynn was able to, like, I don't know, how do I explain this? Is able to rope in multiple women. Like, the manipulation is just on point. Like, she is definitely this master manipulator. Because it's always something that I always I had wondered for years. Like, how is Amberlynn able to find multiple partners? And it's because she's very good at manipulating, you know, girls into being in a relationship with her. I mean, look how things have have been going with Tommy. Tommy is a lo is lonely. She is obviously is, you know depressed and grieving her previous relationship and Amber's and is like instead of taking the cue to like oh you know maybe I should just leave this person alone they're obviously not ready to be in a relationship with anybody oh no I'm, I'm gonna you know take the opportunity and snatch this one up because this person's vulnerable and you know I can mold them to my liking but then you know Tommy is also manipul just as manipulative as, as Amber so it's like Jesus. And this type of behavior was displayed. You you are looking fine as 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 f. I know. Haha, <laughs> queen. Queen was was given. God, this is cringing me the fuck out. Played on and off throughout our entire friendship, whether she or I were seeing someone else. The only difference is when I was seeing someone else, 
I did not participate. Which leads me into my next topic. When Cookie Gate happened, I was on the phone with her, on FaceTime with her, and she was screen sharing all of her conversations between her and Erica. I really want you and Christy to to meet her, to meet. Me too, but I'll figure it out. You will? So you will. And initially she did that because Erica, in one of her voice messages or in the live stream maybe with Jordy, had claimed that Amber said that I gave her the ick. So initially she was trying to justify that she did not say that. And I want to make it very clear. I did not ask to see anything. She did that on her own free will. But during her showing me everything between them, there was like a lot of nude moments. One of those moments being Cookie Gate. Now, why she sent that video to my phone was because she wanted to stop screen sharing and she wanted to watch my reaction to that video, but then also watch my reaction to her reaction to my reaction. Reactionception, if you will. But there is no physical evidence to prove what we were talking about, what was said, anything, because this was all over FaceTime. So in that last screenshot, Amberlynn had mentioned um, her wanting me to meet my ex-partner Chrissy in person. And Chrissy and I aren't on good terms right now. And I know that in my second video, I had said something along the lines of they deserve whatever doxing happens to them because of them publicly inserting themselves into this and publicly supporting Amberlynn. But we recently had a conversation where they basically told me that they and their mother were receiving hate messages and messages basically saying that Chrissy should unalive themselves. And I just want to say that I don't condone that. I have never and would never threaten someone's life, especially over something so trivial like this. So please stop doing that. And Chrissy, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry that that happened to you. And I'm sorry about the doxing comment that I made. And I'm not trying to justify my actions, but I was just really mad. But I hope that one day you can forgive me, even if we never speak again. And on that note, it is time for me to be done. I'm assuming there will be follow-up questions from at least some of you. So you can go ahead and leave those under this video or anywhere on my TikTok. And I'll be recording a fourth Q&A probably in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye. Imagine you want Amberlynn wants Alexis to react to the nudes and all that stuff, and then she wants Alexis to see her reaction to Alexis's reaction. That is so weird. Amberlynn is really fucking weird. She's, you know, we get this other completely, like, false image on YouTube and social media. Then now we're seeing, like, behind the scenes, like, how Amberlynn really is. And it's like, she's, she's creepy. She really weirds me out, like, seriously. But anyways, that is it for today's video. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Toodaloo, my loves.